This week's plant of the week is the Genetic Dwarf Peach and Nectarine. The two varieties that I found and I thought we'd focus on, but there are many, many others, were the, the Honey Babe Peach and the Nectar Babe Nectarine. Hey, this week's plant of the week, we're gonna talk about Genetic Dwarf Peach and Nectarine. Hey, you know, as our suburban yards and city yards get smaller and smaller all the time. You know, horticulturists have kind of responded in the last few decades by modifying new and different varieties from old reliable rootstocks in order to accommodate our shrinking yard needs. I share these two varieties because there's one I happened to stumble across at the nursery on that particular day, but there are several others. You know, the Honey Babe Peach and the Nectar Babe Nectarine are much smaller. They're almost a bush rather than a tree, but they call them trees. But, you know, you have something that's six feet or less, you can almost consider it a bush. But certainly a lot smaller than uh, the Ultra Dwarf fruit trees, Semi Dwarf, and certainly a standard size peach trees. It is kind of a, um, it's kind of a slow grower. You know, it, it'll only grow just a few inches every year, probably if, at its happiest, it'll probably put on about six to eight inches. And they reach an average size, depending on how happy they are, of about five to six feet in a decade. Both of these trees are great for smaller yards, apartment balconies and patios, and any full sun area where space is at a premium, but you wanna have some type of a sustainable plant. You know, in, in containers, and this is how I was introduced to them many decades ago, in containers you can plant, you know, when you put the tree in a, say like a half a wine barrel or a, a large plastic pot or something. I prefer to stay away from plastic, so let's stay the wine barrel made out of wood, uh, a planter box made out of wood, or maybe a large terracotta pot so they breathe a little better. Like I said, in containers, you can plant other things right along with them. You know, the availability is generally, uh, I'm not gonna say an overwhelming amount of availability. You have to hit them at the end of winter or early spring, like right now, right now. Uh, you can get some online, but not always. But plant up those bulbs and those annuals and those things in the same container and really make a big show of the container and make it an actual focal point, like out on the, the patio or gracing the end of a raised vegetable bar, uh, garden bed, something like that. Both are usually grafted on a, a very commercially grown disease resistant rootstock. And the grafts are really, really obvious. You can see them here. In these two varieties, they are either the rootstock Nemagard or Lavelle, one or the other. Both are really good at, you know, repelling certain stone fruit type of diseases. Both the Nectar Babe and Honey Babe are early mid-season harvest time as an average, say like uh, the first week to the second week of July is when things start ripening up. You know, it varies a little depending on where you are at and where you're located and from season to season, depending on what kind of weather we have. Both tend to be very heavy bearers of fruit on such a small little tree, which in my experience, uh, having grown some and grown other fruit trees, suggests to me that you should do some thinning, going out there and literally taking a percentage of the ripening uh, green fruits as they come on, thinning them out and that way you'll have a much sturdier branches, you'll have a lot more energy going into the fruit and the fruit will be bigger and tastier come harvest time. And I would suggest doing that probably uh, late May, early June, something like that. One of the things I really liked about this was the number of chilling hours that are kind of at the low end for many, many varieties of fruit trees. In this case, 400 hours or less. And if you're not familiar with uh, chilling hours, that's the number of hours at 45 degrees or less every winter for the, the tree to respond normally in the springtime. Since the tree is much smaller, you can easily cover it should you be in like a, a full bloom period, depending on where you're at. Let's just say March 
and all of a sudden you want you hear you're getting a cold snap you can go out there and throw a frost blanket around these guys without any problem to kind of avoid the the blossom burn from a, a freezing cold day say like 20 degrees night or something man that'll singe those new blossoms they respond really well to a good organic fruit and nut type of fertilizer i always you know expound on the eb stone product but there's other good products out there as well you know and i do that about once a month until harvest then reduce to maybe two two maybe three feedings before winter you don't need the tree doesn't need to just keep you know bulging at the seams all year long it can give you its fruit and then you can just keep it satisfied the rest of the season and it'll put on some more growth after the the harvest time so something a little different here from uh, yard coach and plan of the week and something you can consider for your landscape great along a sunny back fence in front of a screen of emerald arborvitae windscreen or something it's come kind of similar arrangement and then a nice row of perennials down in front for a little pop of seasonal color keep them spaced appropriately for a good air circulation and maintenance and harvest so you can get in and walk around the tree hey this week's plant of the week the honey babe and nectar babe genetic dwarf peach and nectarine tree check them out now every place in the country and world may not have these exact varieties but there's other varieties you can look at too so if you have a small space you still want to have fruit trees bam there you go hey guys thanks for joining me i'll catch you next week you guys take care